What's up guys, my name's McNally. So for this week's video, we're gonna talk about lying on the internet, which you know, no one ever does. It's never been done before. Lying on the internet is about as old as putting peanut butter and jelly on a sandwich. Seriously, they built entire TV shows on MTV around lying to people. It's kind of a cliche that people lie to get you to buy products and other stuff. And people, of course, lie on Instagram in order to get more likes or become more popular. We even have some YouTubers who, uh, you know, lie, but we won't mention those right now. Regardless though, I actually enjoy it because some people just go so far above and beyond, it almost sounds too ridiculous to really believe. This video is about today. Things that people have said that probably didn't happen. I ended up finding this Reddit page called Happened Really. They have all of these kind of tweets and stuff that people have sent out that say this situation happened to them, but we know it really didn't happen at all. It never happened. They just made it up for the likes. But before we begin, if you guys like the channel and you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, I've been getting messages from you all saying that you haven't been receiving my videos or knowing that my videos are posted. I post every Friday, but if you don't want to, you know, remember that, hit that bell notification and that will alert you every time I post a new video. Also, if you guys want to follow me on any of my social media, that is in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump right in into our first real life situation. So the first one reads this. Y'all, a few years ago, I emailed Apple about not having an otter emoji, which apparently my, is my fave animal. And they responded a little while ago with simply just look at 13.2. I ignored it thinking it was just them promoting the update, but look what the, what's the update. Bless up Apple for listening. Okay, so I have a few uh, things to pick out here. One, whenever I call Apple and not for stuff like this, but for simply, hey, my phone won't turn on. Can you help me? I usually get no answer. And by the time I do get an answer, usually an hour later, it just turns out that I just need to plug in my phone and I just wasted an hour. Also, I find it kind of hard to believe. There are like, what, 300 million iPhone users in the world, most likely more. And this one person emails some random person at Apple and somehow his or her email finds it all the way to the top of Apple people and they just pick and are like, you know what, an otter would be a good thing to add to the emojis. Also, Apple, I don't think has control over the emojis. Isn't that another company that does that? So could it just be that it's a weird coincidence? I kind of want to know of this person's friends who actually believed this. If you received this, you'd be like, uh, yeah, cause you're so big at Apple. Apple would definitely listen to you. Next one reads this. So I went to a haunted house yesterday and the actors didn't even scare me. They just go, ah, you're so cute and pretty. I wanted to be so scared that I'd punch a clown in the face, but instead I gave him a hug, LMAO, LMAO. So I definitely went to school with these types of girl that think they're so pretty that everyone else just has to, when they see them fall off our faces and our hearts just like burst out of our chests. That's really just a gory explanation. Why did I think of that? I I'm gonna have to say no I to this one. I find it very hard to believe that you just simply walk through a haunted house, which by the way, you're probably not the first person to go through a haunted house, especially not a pretty girl. And I find it hard to believe that those people there that are, you know, paid to be scary and pretend to be zombies and monsters would risk their salary and go, wow, you're so cute. Also, I'd find it kind of weird if someone just came up to me and said, Oh, you're so cute. Of course, it sometimes happens on the internet or sometimes get even worse things on the internet. I'm not gonna go into it. This is when you're really hardcore for fishing for compliments. So this next one is probably one of my favorites and in hindsight, a genius idea. So every birthday we get my grandma a GPS cause the woman gets lost every time she leaves the house and every year she loses the thing. Today, my mom was on eBay for something and turns out this woman was selling the damn thing for the last eight years. I find that hard to believe. I mean, my grandparents keep everything I give to them. Even gross like or pasta bracelets that I made, they still kept that. Throw that pasta in a bowl and let's cook it up. Still a very genius idea. You don't want the thing, so why not just turn around and sell it. And of course you can't return it because sometimes people don't put receipts with their stuff and then you're stuck with this thing that you don't want. I know it's not real, but were it to be real, I'd have to go with grandma on this one. It's just too, it's just a really good idea. Now this one's a little bit different because this one, the person saying the thing gets called out by a friend. So I'm arrested with two other activists. 
How are you tweeting? They take your phone off you when you're arrested. See, this is now something that I would say. Are you even texting me? I, don't, shouldn't you, first off, don't the cops have your phone? And why would you be tweeting at a time like this? Shouldn't you be more concerned with, I don't know, getting put in prison? What is dumb way to get arrested for protesting? Like of all the ways you could be arrested, you got arrested protesting. I'd be so embarrassed. Me getting food at the airport, cashier name, me, Paris, cashier, like the country, me, uh, that's not a country. Cashier looks at coworkers. Did you know Paris isn't a country? Paris is about as much a country as England is a city. Guess we have Mitt Crompton involved in this one. Seeing as I am a college graduate, and I went through, you know, college and having professors and having to deal with what they would call you. A professor asked if I prefer miss or mister. And I accidentally said ya boy without thinking. So now I have a professor that calls me ya boy Rogers every time I see him. I know this is not real, but let's just pretend it was for a second. Either your professor is pretending or you really need to get your money back from that school because you have some really dumb professors. Like I'm trying to think of all the professors I had and I would say that maybe 95% of them were over the age of 60. And I can't ever see one of them even saying the word ya boy out loud. They had a hard enough time just understanding how we were talking to them during class. I once had a professor slam a thermos down on, the de on his desk and say to us, there's more pressure in my sinuses right now than there is at the bottom of the sea. This thing's full of NyQuil. I'm going to drink it while I teach, and when your heads are replaced by swirling rainbows, I will cancel the rest of class. The class ended up being 17 minutes long. First off, this is every person in school or college's dream. That your professor, either this or that your professor just forgets there's class and doesn't come. That is the dream of all students. I will never experience a professor that or teacher that has come to school completely lit. How are you even driving to the school. This person probably just got kicked out of class or something. Now here's a text chain from, I guess, I'm guessing a sister to a brother or something. And I can relate to this one kind of hard, seeing as it, I've worked several different jobs over my life and uh, I've never been a server. I just had a table of 11 say, good job, we can tell you're you've been doing this for a long time. And I said, nope, it's my first serving job and it's been four weeks. And I kid you not, every person at the table clapped and fist bumped me because I got every order right and their food came out in like 10 minutes. Listen, I've been at restaurants before, sitting there, you're waiting, you're waiting, waiting some more and your food doesn't come out. And it most of the time because they forgot to even put your order in. Now you have to wait 30 minutes longer because your food order was never put in. I've worked at places where I've been like folding shirts and stuff and people will come up and go, oh, so good, you can fold, you fold that so beautifully. Uh, yeah, believe it or not, I can handle folding shirts and clothes. Not honestly that hard. Now this one is for anyone out there with kids because we all know your kid is the best, they're great. But this post I find a little too hard to believe. Even if you have like the smartest child. My two and a half year old daughter made her first meal mostly by herself, highly doubt that. She she made garlic parmesan asparagus, stuffing, and lamb chops. So essentially your two and a half year old is able to do what most people can't even do in their 30s and 40s. Mommy helped with the hot stuff. Sure she did. She washed up and prepared the food, snapped the bombs off of her asparagus, cut the butter with a butter knife, seasoned everything, even the meat, and put everything in the pots and pans and cleaned up after herself. I'm so proud of her. We definitely made it to Flavortown. Now look at this meal. Does this look like a meal made by a two and a half year old? Let's be honest, your wife cooked the entire thing. I'd be shocked if your two and a half year old was even there for most of the actual cooking. She just peaced out and went to go watch Frozen or something. A few years ago, my friend was sitting in a subway. His dad came back with his sandwich, but before he could take a bite, a random EM grabs his sandwich and shoves it into her baby's mouth. Now, I have no clue what an EM is, but I'm actually interested in the story they're, they're telling here. My friend was a violent person at the time and walked right up to the baby and punched it in the face, then took it, his sandwich. What? EM, who I still don't know who that is, tried to report him to the police for assault. Instead, it backfired for my friend's dad. My friend's dad report her for stealing. It worked. So let me get this straight. A random person, an EM, which don't really know what that is, I'm sure I, comes up to you, grabs your sandwich out of your hand, shoves it in the baby's mouth. You then proceed to get up, punch the baby in the face. The EM tried to report you for, you know, punching the baby in the face, which... I'm pretty confident is illegal. And then your dad reported her for stealing. And because your dad reported her for stealing, you don't get reported for punching a baby in the face. That is some 
weird. How does that even work? That doesn't, that's not even how it works. Even if this was true and you're like trying to make it the most truthful like story possible so people would believe it, not even like legally, I don't think correct. Pretty sure you shouldn't go around punching babies in the face and then bragging about it. So we took somebody to Disney. We walked up to Ariel and she said, yeah, that's Ariel, but it's just a costume, not her. Can you stop being so smart? Kids are really smart sometimes. They're also really dumb sometimes. But just because they're smart sometimes and dumb other times doesn't mean we have to put it all over social media. Also, how can one just like ruin a trip to Disney? Way to ruin it for all of our kids who are, you know, too dumb to understand that it's not real. I will tell you that I used to be terrified of like people who would dress up as characters, specifically ones who dressed up as Santa and the Easter Bunny. I don't know why, they just always creeped me out. So here we have another uh, hot girl Snapchat that, so earlier today I was sitting on a bench and there was a trash on the sidewalk and this random guy starts to pick up the trash only around where I was sitting. He threw it away and said something to me, but I couldn't hear him. So I took out my hear earphones and asked him to repeat it. Then he said, I had to pick up the trash. You're a queen. You can't be sitting surrounded by filth. Usually I would have been a bit jaded, but that was actually really sweet. Okay, that didn't happen. I don't know anyone that would actually A, do that or B, have the balls to say that to somebody. Shouldn't we see her face? Like, let's see this face. You told the story of how hot you were. Let's see your face. Like, it's a part of the story here. See, the internet, that's the only, like, problem with the internet is that people just make up these stories and then work really hard to make people believe that they're actually real stories or situations they've been in. And then we get things like this. Also, it's kind of convenient that no one else was there except you and this person. And we don't know who the guy is, so obviously we can't match your stories up together. I'm getting very like Sherlock Holmes about this stuff now. Here we have a, a Facebook post. Highlight of my day, just got out of work, blasting some tunes when a cop rolls up next to me at a, at a red light in Brat. I didn't think much of him until he looked over at me and pointed down at the window. I rolled my, wi I rolled my window down and asked him, what's the problem officer? To which he responded, do you wanna run it? as he proceeds to rev his engine and look up and down my car. Come on. The police challenged you to a street race. Knowing miracles don't happen every day, I spun my tires for a couple seconds at the light, giving him a small but definitely nervous nod of the head. Thankfully, it wasn't a trap. Some cops are I, I guess. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, this one I, I, I know for a fact is not true. Why would a cop challenge you to anything? Like I just, I'm trying to imagine like a cop just pulling up to me and being like, yo, you want to race? And just like what would be going through my head? So so this one is apt for the time of year we're in. Earlier today, my father went to a supermarket for Halloween candy for tomorrow night. He goes in and everything is Christmas already. He asks the manager about it and he tells my father, oh, Halloween already passed. Uh, hello Nimrod, it's October 30th. Okay, so I get this one. You know, when you're working in a store or something and there's like seasonal changes, you could confuse sometimes. Now, I highly doubt that he just forgot there was Halloween. I mean, come on, these stories are all, you know, not true. People just lie on the internet. That's kind of a insight into the lying of the internet. Lots of people do it. It's weird sometimes and they come up with weird, with weird stuff, but still it's a thing to do on the internet, I guess. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you'll be alerted when I post a new video. If you wanna follow me on any of my social media, that's all in the description below. So in the comments below, which lies that you found to be kind of funny or weird or which ones you've read on the internet or maybe your friends have tried to pull on you. I will see you guys next week with a brand new video.